In my view, the macro picture continues to deteriorate on a global scale. We've never seen anything like this before. Uh, as a percentage of GDP, global GDP, debt is skyrocketing out of control. Uh, and we have nowhere to go but much, much worse with regard to the global debt problem. I mean, we just got some pretty shocking, and in my view, absolutely shocking uh, calls about what's happening here in the debt market. We got Larry Fink from BlackRock. We got J.P. Morgan's uh, Jamie Dimon. And we even got the Fed Chair Powell explaining the danger, the, the clear and present danger that exploding debt is, uh, is, is causing here in the United States and around the world. Hello and welcome back to Soar Financially, where we discuss the macro to understand the micro. My name is Kai Hoffman. I'm the at JR Mining Guy on Twitter and your host for this conversation today. I'm really looking forward to welcoming back Gregory Menorino. He's the Robin Hood of Wall Street. Uh, he's got a fantastic YouTube channel with daily updates. He's absolutely killing it. Uh, I wish I had his consistency, I have to admit. I'm it and uh, lots of good content he puts out in his daily 15-minute videos. You should definitely check out his YouTube channel. But uh, today I have a quick a few questions prepared for him because the U.S. economy is so strong, seeming, seemingly very strong. We've got lots of data dumped on us the last 24 hours, so we're going to discuss that. Uh, he forecasted a market meltdown about seven months ago when he was on the program before. So, of course, I'm going to ask him, where where is it and uh, when can we expect it? Of course, timing is everything. And we talk, we'll, we will talk about silver because that was the most undervalued asset, according to Gregory, uh, seven months ago. So, We'll see where it is and where it stands. It's upticking a little bit, 2573 as we're speaking. So it is seeing signs of life, but it is lagging behind gold. So we'll find out why that is as well. Now, please hit that subscribe button and uh, leave a comment, leave a like. Uh, put in some comments that uh, you want to see in terms of questions you want to see asked as well. I hope uh, this is educational and uh, your questions help us make it as much as as, as as educational as possible. Now, without much further ado, Gregory, it's great to see you again. Thank you so much for joining me here on the channel. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I just mentioned in my intro, uh, lot, lots and lots to talk about. Uh, the Fed uh, discussion or the FOMC meeting is about two weeks behind us now, uh, but we're getting constantly data dumped on us here as well. Um, let, let, let's discuss. Like, Let's maybe start with a bit of a summary. We've done that last time as well, but what, what's the state of the economy? What has changed there, Gregory? Well, in my view, the macro picture continues to deteriorate on a global scale. We've never seen anything like this before. Uh, as a percentage of GDP, global GDP, debt is skyrocketing out of control. Uh, and we have nowhere to go but much, much worse with regard to the global debt problem. I mean, we just got some pretty shocking, and in my view, absolutely shocking uh, calls about what's happening here in the debt market. We got Larry Fink from BlackRock. We got J.P. Morgan's uh, Jamie Dimon. And we even got the Fed Chair Powell explaining the danger the, the clear and present danger that exploding debt is, uh, is is causing here in the United States and around the world. Larry Fink said he's never seen anything like this in, in, in his life. And this is the truth. I mean, we are clearly moving towards a moment in time that people are never going to forget. Uh, and they'll, they'll talk about for, for hundreds of years after we're gone. We've, again, this is an environment that is very unique uh, with regard to the economic data. Uh, what do we got going on here? We got business investment, which is a major leading in, uh, indicator, all but gone. Uh, supposedly, we got some kind of uptick with regard to factory activity. This is nonsensical. I don't trust a single word of the economic data that we have coming out. Look, we can all uh, see what's happening here. We're being told that inflation is dropping. It keeps rising by their own numbers. The fakery, the distortions, the deceptions, just accept it because that's where we are unfortunately, but we need to take the right steps to protect ourselves here. That's my take on this. It's always been my take on this. Um, you know, realizing what's going on and how this is playing out. I mean, it's pretty much people who follow my blog saying we have called this to the letter. So we're taking action here. We're becoming our own central banks, betting against the debt, staying along the stock market as the economy continues to crater. As I said months ago, the worse off the economy gets, higher the market's going to go. That is a phenomenon that is continuing. I expect it to continue here. At the end of last year, I, I explained to people, we're going to see a few things happen. War in 24, war is expanding. We were going to see record high, record high, record high, record high with regard to the stock market. Boom, here we are. And that's not going to stop here, uh, at least through the presidential selection cycle that we're in right now. 
so look, it's just too simple in my view to capitalize on everything that's being thrown at us. We understand the situation, at least I hope people do, and they're taking action. They're doing something about it. They're not sitting back, sucking their thumbs like little sheep being led to the slaughter. That's my take on it. No, that's uh, that, that's very clear there, Gregory, and uh, appreciate that uh, that introduction to the, to the whole discussion as well. Because again, there's, <laughs> there's so much going on that we're that we're ignoring, which is insane. Um, the, the question is like the, the, the debt is skyrocketing. We can't get away from that. The question is how do we mitigate that debt problem? Like, you've, what what's a possible solution? Let, let's talk about solutions because we're always talking about problems. Let's talk yeah. about solutions. What's uh, how can we get rid of the debt problem? Can't. It's not meant to get rid of. It's meant to continually inflate. What people don't understand here. I mean, who who are the who are the issuers of all this debt? Where does it come from? Here, it's the central banks, and they they have one product. Their product is debt. The more debt they issue to the world, or or they are called on to issue, the stronger they become, not the weaker. Henceforth, why we're seeing exactly what we are seeing now across this the, the board. So. What do people need to do? They need to take action. They need to bet against the system. The system is imploding. It's go, this is a ticking time bomb. Don't listen to Greg Manorino anymore. Listen to people like BlackRock's Larry Fink. Listen to Jamie Dimon, the CEO again of J.P. Morgan. Listen to the Fed chair himself who explained the situation. They have to tell the truth because they can say, hey, this is we already won you where this is going to go. So you got to be on the opposite side of that trade, at least from a financial standpoint. I believe that commodities today are massively undervalued, none more so than silver. Again, why? Why does Greg Manorino say that silver is the most undervalued asset in the world? Do I just pull this out of a hat and because it <laughs> sounds good? No. I look at a few things here. These are the dynamics that Greg Manorino looks at. I look at the Dow gold ratio and the gold silver ratio. Okay, we, we understand these things do have a historical significance if you want to look back on it. We have to say, where is reality with regard to the stock market? Do, do we believe that it's overvalued or it's fairly valued based on what we're seeing right now? Um, I, I sincerely believe that the market is pricing in rate cuts, which are going to come in June, in my opinion here, from the Fed. So the market has this 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 uh, that's surging right now on, on the back of the promise of more easy money. But where's the bottom? OK, we don't know where the bottom is. All we do know is the Fed jumped in here at Dow 6000 with QE1 and that has continued with QE2 and Operation Twist and pumped this thing into oblivion right now where nothing makes sense anymore. Uh, this whole thing is just too twisted. But that means that there's opportunity here. So looking at the Dow, let's just say, where are we eventually going to go when the debt bubble bursts? And we are in a debt hyper bubble, which means we're in a full on liquidity crisis, period, the end. They're both linked. Eventually, this is going to get real. So if you figure or try to at least come up with a logical uh, bottom here for the Dow, let's just say it's Let's say it's 10,000 because we are extremely distorted. I believe at one point we're going to get a one to one ratio with gold and a, probably a 10 or a 15 to one with gold to silver. So that's how we come up with my scenario. We could see Dow 6,000, we could see below that in a full on meltdown. What eventually is going to occur is an implosion here in the debt market where you're going to see rates around the world spike in an uncontrolled fashion. That's going to put a lot of pressure on the stock markets. And stock markets are going to sell off, people's heads are going to spin around like The Exorcist. Uh, and uh, I've been telling people that that's how it's going to work. People are not going to know where this came from. And cash is just going to move. It, in my opinion, it's going to move into commodities. It's going to move into other assets as well. Bitcoin, other cryptocurrencies, artwork, musical instruments, collectible things, cars. You know, if people think that cash just grows little, little money wings and flies away into money heaven, it doesn't do that. It moves through the markets in relatively predictable positions. So if we can stay ahead of that, how can we be beaten? Oh, absolutely. I, I agree with that. I do want to challenge you a little bit, though. Do you segregate between the commodities as well? Because what you're describing, if that debt, debt bubble bursts, it sounds awfully like we're heading into depression as well because we can't afford anything anymore, right? Uh, like, where's the money supposed to come from if we can't service the debt at all? Like, let's take the U.S., for example, right? So mm -hmm. it does sound like a depressionary scenario. So why would copper, for example, uh, remain higher? And uh, you also mentioned sort of, um, discretionary, how you call it, like discretionary luxury items, like art, wine, cars as well. Like, do, mm -hmm. do you think there will be enough uh, liquidity for for, uh, for those assets to appreciate in value? This is how I look at it. This, what do we know is, I always try to break it down to what we know. And I think this is what we know, at least I hope so. 
What we have been witnessing here for, I don't know how long, I've been telling people this for over 10 years. We have a situation here where central banks are, are in a literal race to the bottom with regard to their currencies. They want to see who can suck the purchasing power out of their currency faster. And this obviously creates a, a, an, an inflation, inflationary environment, a depressionary in, environment, too. There are people, I mean, you know, look, it depends on where you stand on this whole thing, whether we're in a depression or not. People that are losing their jobs. We have we have these major corporations that are laying people off by the tens of thousands. Uh, this is another call that I said would happen at the end of last year. I said, watch what's going to happen in 24. You're going to see mass layoffs. Bang. I think. I nailed that one to the wall as well. And when they're not done here, what's what's Wall Street doing? Wall Street has been rewarding these companies that have been laying off people by bidding their stocks up higher. But again, understanding that commodities are priced in the dollars, okay? And it takes more weaker dollars to buy anything uh, at this point. That's just how it's going to play out in my view. I can't imagine another way. And we have to also understand what else is what's underlying this. If we realize that, and I hope we do, uh, and don't take my word for this, just do your do your own research. That that central banks here again, they they have one product and one product only. They have only one tool. They manipulate debt. The more debt, the issues are stronger they become, as we just covered here. That also sucks the purchasing power out of the currency. Um, eventually, what in my opinion, all right, and I think this is pretty much common knowledge now. Um, we are moving towards a new system. I've been telling people this for the longest time here, a completely digital system, um, and one which is going to extort more control out of the people, unfortunately. But they got to take down the current system first. This is what we're seeing, what we're seeing now. And eventually, again, people are very fearful, and they should be, about what, in my view, is going to be coming here down the pike eventually with the debt market implosion, which is going to wipe out the financial system. But again, they're going to say, okay, everyone, don't worry. We have a solution for you. It's already set up, all right? There's just no doubt about it. And I think that people are starting to see and hear, not just from Greg Manorino, from a lot of people about the current state of affairs. I mean, just today, going back to Larry Fink, going back to Jamie Dimon, and even the Fed chair himself, they're all broadcasting these warnings about the current system. Okay, but they know where this is going. There's just no doubt about it. In my opinion, this is the uh, the creation where we are in the, the midst of uh, a neo-feudal system, extreme haves, extreme have-nots. And, I, and uh, I've been telling people that if, for years, years and years, I don't know how long now, that if they were a member of the middle class, they're, they're being systematically wiped out. So they must take action, at least from a financial standpoint and beyond. I always tell people, you know, love each other, care about each other, be charitable. We got we to gotta come together because I cannot see, and maybe I'm blind and maybe you can enlighten me, okay, as to how this is not going to unfold in a worst case scenario. Because it looks to me like not only are we going there, but we're being pushed off of that cliff. No, I, I tend to fully agree. Like the writing is on the wall. The question is timing, of course, as well. And uh, the other question is like, how much longer can we sustain the current debt levels and the current environment and system as well? Um, we're, we're good at pushing the, or kicking the can down the road. Like we always come up either with a new term, a new program, or uh, we, we come up with money out of, out of thin air, right? So uh, the question is, and uh, you, you, you brought up the mass layoffs and in that connection, I want to ask like productivity is something that could boost GDP. Right, or boost the productivity, and that would sort of offset the debt to GDP ratio. And I'm just looking at scenarios where we can just sustain the current scenario we're in, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and how much longer can this last? Like, I think we all know this can't, like, in theory, it shouldn't last much longer, in theory. But practically, as I said, there's always a new term, a new word, a new way to print money to sort of sustain mm -hmm. where we're at. So I'm curious, like, do, do you see any way to mitigate that? Like, what, what are the ways to increase GDP, for example? Is productivity increased by labor, right? Or it's a uh, boost, boost, no, it's a productivity increase. That's pretty much it. Like, that's all we have. Right? Well, what are they doing now? Okay, we're seeing war expand, the funding for war. No other endeavor on this planet Earth generates a need for more borrowed dollars than war. So yeah. we're seeing this being calculated, government spending in the propagation of war. Uh, they, I, I've been explaining to people that you're going to see, oh, these great GDP numbers, but it's all about war. It's all about war right now, the funding for war. Where's all this cash come from? You know, people, it, it, it drives me crazy because I hear it from people all the time. But here's the situation. We don't have, no developed nation on this planet has a war chest, okay? So all this cash to fund these wars, which is 
obviously added to these GDP numbers, it's going to be created out of nothing. And that is also inflationary, but people aren't supposed to know that. They create cash out of thin air for whatever they want. It devalues the currency. So you've got to be on the opposite side. Look, there's no way. And it's not even meant to be fixed. It's just what people don't understand is the reason why we're seeing hyperbolic debt right now. And it's the, the, the pace at which global debt is rising is, is, is absolutely staggering. And it's going to continue to go that way until it, until it doesn't here. But people are feeling effects of this around the world. It's not just a phenomenon here in the United States. Okay. So understanding that we can pretty much zero in and point our fingers at who's actually causing all the problems here. The same people that are telling you and warning us that there is an issue are the same people who are creating the problem. You remember the inflationary nonsensical narrative and temporary inflation. They all knew that it was not, I called this out from day one. I said there was no way, but the, so they're going to continue to inflate. You're going to see the standard of living continue to deteriorate. The, uh, the people struggling here just to to unfortunately get by here. Most people here in the United States, and I'm sure this is a worldwide phenomenon, can't come up with $1,000 in the case of an emergency. They're being strangled to death. We have personal debt, household debt, consumer debt at record highs, continuing higher. But the debt situation is operates like this. In order for the system to maintain even uh, the illusion that it's functioning, the debt must increase exponentially. The moment this doesn't happen, this whole thing, the illusion of it will disappear, but fast. And it already is here, but they must find yet another reason to inflate um, central banks. In other words, to create more cash to pull into the now borrowing from the future. And in my view, this is why we're about to see uh, central banks uh, cut rates, I think, aggressively uh, beginning in, in June because it gives them yet another avenue to create debt out of nothing and then buy more of it. It's, it's a revolving door. It's an insane situation how they issue debt and then they buy it back to another door, issue debt through one door, buy it back to another just to maintain this illusion that we're in right now. And this is going to get real for people, unfortunately. But you know, what, what happens is it's an interesting phenomenon. People look at their 401k plans. Oh, I'm doing great. I am. I'm super rich. I'm a millionaire on paper until it all goes away. But these are just digits that exist on the screen. It's not real. They're not realized any of this stuff. But uh, it's always the same story. This is no different than what we've seen before, except the magnitude, I believe, of what we're seeing now is unlike anything we've ever seen before. It's hard to argue that that's not the tr the case. Now, the inflation debate is an interesting one. And the two, two sides of that story are two, two parts I want to touch on. A, like how, how sticky is inflation and where do you see it trending? And the other is, based on what you mentioned, the, the government's trying to inflate their way out of the problem. Like the question is, how high does the inflation rate need to be to actually inflate away the debt. Uh, I look back at, uh, you know, 1929 in Germany, the inflation was insanely high. It's not 3%. It wasn't even 9%. Right. So how high does it need to be to actually make an impact? Right. I think I heard when inflation was at 8%, uh, you know, a year mm -hmm. ago, that it needs 40 years to inflate the debt at that level. Right. So that's, of course, not a not a way to go. So it needs to be much no. higher. So, <laughs> right. So the question is, like, two things. How sticky is inflation? Where do you see it going? And of course, how high does it need to be to actually have an impact on reducing the debt or inflating away the debt? There's no way to inflate it away. It's going to continue to outpace anything for the foreseeable future. And that's just, it's by design as well. It's just, just it's going to continue and get a lot worse, unfortunately. But again, we're going to hear from, uh, the propaganda ministry, which, you know, the CNBCs, the Bloombergs, the Fox, this is how great we're doing. We're doing fantastic. And everyone's rich. You know that because they're telling you that. But you see, they pe they think people are stupid. They think people um, are, are just they, they don't believe their own eyes. I say, people, look, just look around you. How How is it working? Let's talk to your neighbors. Are you seeing this? Are they seeing the same things as you or are they you know, seeing things that the mainstream media wants them to believe? Um, look, this what they're going to do here. And what they will do here, central banks working in concert to take down the current system. And that's what they're doing here. This has been a plan that's been in effect since the inception of central. People don't even realize central banking, how it works, why the why these private institutions are in control of the monetary system here. Private institutions here that do not have our best interest in mind. They have their 
interest in mind here. And that's where we're seeing what we are seeing here. We could have a, a look, if we had a commodity backed or a wealth based system, do you think we'd be in the situation we're in now? No. They had to take that away. That was key number one. And then convince people that their system was the real system. Okay. Now that this so mode it be, this fiat system, a fake system was real. It ain't real. Okay. It just allowed them to solidify their control on the world. Uh, and strangle everyone to death here. I mean, what is this system designed to do? It's designed to create nation slaves. I mean, we have debt here when the United States were 34 trillion at face value, not including derivatives or anything associated with that's in the quadrillions. Okay. And then you've got individual citizens themselves who are carrying their highest debt load ever. Is this, does anyone here believe that this is just by chance, by some, a uh, comedy of errors that got us here? Do, do you believe that? No one believes that. This had to be and is deliberate, period. It's just, it's too simple, but people don't understand it. They think they're existing in a system that has some bearing on reality, which it doesn't, it's not on the elemental chart. It doesn't even really exist, the system that we have. It, it seems real, but it's not. It's, it's based upon this uh, it, it, the system will function because people believe it will, and eventually it's going to turn around. It's just, and we we're seeing cracks in it now. And what are they doing? They're already setting up the scapegoats. It's war. It's this nation's problem. Oh, it's this. It, you know, they're pointing all their fingers because again, the central banks who have created this problem, they must remain blameless. People have no idea of how the financial system actually works. Very, very few people do. Um, and it's the dark underbelly of this that I find ex extremely interesting and which I study all the time. You know, what's really happening? Okay, we have this story. The narrative is this, but what's actually going on? And it has allowed me, the people that follow my work, I think to stay way ahead of the curve. And I promise people, and I, I think uh, I've done a good job at this, uh, and keeping them ahead of the curve on this and allowing them to understand what action they need to take. You're right. We sit here and we can talk a lot about what's going on. But what are the actions that need to be done? Again, I've been telling people, betting against the debt, become your own central bank, understand the situation, realize that cash doesn't fly away to money heaven. It's going to eventually move. Stuff like that. It's it's pretty basic if you understand how move, how cash moves through the markets in predictable patterns. Now, I'll, I'll ask you at the end of our conversation how you would allocate a million dollars right now, right? So we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, yeah. come, come, food for thought here as well. Uh, wage inflation is still outpacing the other inflation, right? On paper, at least. Um, just looking for factors that could prolong the suffering, I call it, right? The, the current yeah, scenarios. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I'm just looking for scenarios because we always look for the negatives and the cracks. And I'll ask you about the cracks that you're seeing in a second as well. But for now, a little, I, I want to look at the, the positives. <laughs> like, like how much longer is that melt-up going to, to last, right? The melt-up period that we're in right now. Uh, we've seen Tesla come out with numbers that were pointing. Um, is that maybe one of the cracks, but uh, how, how much longer is the melt-up scenario going to last? What are maybe some of the positive factors driving the current scenario and the current environment? People need to be long this market. How do I say this another way? I've been telling people this for, for years. Um, play the game. If we know what they're going to do, it just makes it very simple to understand what we should be doing here. Um, I have a free newsletter. In fact, today, I, and I've been telling people, you know, stay long the market. Buy the market. If we realize that Bond yields that is, uh, are going to be – what does this do? Why is it – let's just pose a question here. Okay. It's rhetorical. Why is it that central banks have chosen to get into the debt market and suppress rates artificially? What does it do when a central bank gets in here and buys the debt? Well, it suppresses bond yields. And that – opens up a doorway for cash to make its way into risk assets, or in this case, we're talking about the stock market. And this is why it has become so twisted and so distorted, even though today, as we are doing this, we're seeing an interesting phenomenon occur. That is, we have a, a significant sell-off in the debt market. We're seeing a spike in the 10-year yield. Last time I looked at it, it was 44 on, on the 10 year yield here, stock market under pressure. Okay. Everyone who follows my blog generally realizes how that plays out, but we have a dollar this morning that is uh, actually slightly lower. So what is, what is, what is it telling us? What is the market saying? What is the language here? The language is by the dip here. Um, and, and, and that's what I intend to do. I'm sitting back on watch it, but I'm going to wait maybe a day or two and I intend to buy more, uh, 
uh, add to my long position, should I say. Uh, we need to stay along this market because that's the way it's going to go, at least through the presidential selection cycle that we're in here. After that, things will change, in, in my opinion, or have the potential to change. But it's just what I look at here. I'm not like the average stock market person who focuses on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the S&P 500, the Russell 2000. The Nat I don't focus on this at all. What these are are a side effect of the action in the major stock market indices uh, as to what's happening in the debt market. So the debt market dictates the price action for everything. That's how it works. And if we understand, if we study the debt market and we see what's going on, we know all, all the rigging that's going on here. And by watching risk, we can understand and best gauge what we should be doing with our cash. It's that simple. And this is what, I mean, just look at, look, at my last videos for, is since for years now, I've told people the spots they should be in and by and large, and I'm not saying every single one, but by and large, 90%, and that's a big number, has been correct. And it's only from understanding the dynamics that are in play. And it's really not a hard thing to do, um, in my opinion. Well, you, you mentioned in one of your videos that you need to become your own central bank, right? Mm -hmm. So... How, how does one do that? And how, how do you bet against uh, what, what's going on out there as well in, in a way that you can actually, you know, profit from it as well? Commodities yeah. well, is moving hard people, assets. So. Yeah. Being, becoming your essential bank is the easiest thing in the world. It's a great question because people ask me this all the time. When I say that, be, be, you know, uh, bet against the debt, be, you have to be in a wealth-based unit. What do we know? Do you see these things? I keep them on my desk. I don't sell these things, so I have no vested interest in this other than owning them myself here. In my opinion, as I said earlier, these are the most undervalued assets in the world, so are my favorite. Um, but how you become your own central bank is do what they do, okay? They don't hold gold for tradition, as we heard out of the mouth of Ben Bernanke, then Fed chair. Uh, they hold this up because these are units of wealth. They're not units of a debt. So hold units of wealth in this kind of an environment that's how you become your own central bank. I've been telling people this since day one, pretty much. Bet against the debt. Become your own central bank. What we, This hyper debt situation has gotten out of control. No one, not even me, thought that it would get to the situation that we're in now. And these central banks have been very, very crafty, continuing to inflate and inflate and inflate. Now we're seeing the effects of this. And then we're being told by the propaganda ministry, the CNBC, the Bloomberg, the Fox Business, how everything is fine. Everything is not fine, again, with people. Just, just look at... Just a couple of metrics here, personal debt, household debt, consumer debt, skyrocketing. People can't make ends meet. Um, unfortunately, you know, uh, we're seeing uh, repossessions and foreclosures all start to kick up. And this, this should be, it should sound familiar to people because this is what we saw last time. But this time is a lot worse, unfortunately. They need to create dependency on the system. So they, when they issue in their new system, people will accept it and, and beg for it. That's the truth. Um, was that, does that answer the question? I, th I think so. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, one, one last thing I want to touch on as well is like the cracks in the system that you see appearing right now, because it also leads to timing a little bit. You brought in the U.S. elections, which is in it, which are set in time. I think it's the beginning of November, November 4th or so, I believe, are the U.S. elections. So l let's put a, maybe a bit of you know time frame around it as well. Like where mm -hmm. A, where do you see the cracks and B, like what could be the timing of all of this? The cracks are everywhere. And I discuss this every day in my in my blog here. I mean, just the stuff we talked about right here. Just look at the situation around you. Uh, does it seem like everyone? Maybe you know, a lot of people are, are what's happening here is a very sad thing. And something I said would happen from years ago. You got members of the middle class, or at least prime members, who are trying to borrow themselves into prosperity, kind of like the nation is doing. You can't do this. OK, unfortunately, these people are assuring themselves that they're going to have a front seat on on the roller coaster ride into the pit of despair or financial destitution um you know you you, you can't fall through that trap door you got to find another way to uh to to at least get yourself through this and I, I think that's what i outlined all the time by being along the market then again being in other assets as well here you know i'm not a one-trick pony and everyone knows that here um i i'm allocated or i have my uh 
I'm spread out all over the place in a lot of different assets here. I own obviously gold and silver and platinum and palladium and, and Bitcoin is my largest crypto uh, holding. I own artwork. I own classic instruments, classic cars, real estate. I mean, obviously a, a big chunk is in the stock market as well. So I try to attack this from multiple fronts. Uh, but if you only had to choose one, I'd tell people to, you know, uh, hoard silver. I still, I mean, look, don't take my word for this. Nobody who's listening to this. Do your own research. Again, look at the Dow gold ratio, gold silver ratio. Think about it. You know, I, I don't want anyone to believe anything that I say. That's the truth. I want people to do their own research into what I say. If it makes sense to you or it doesn't, just research the things I'm talking about and see if by doing your own due diligence, you say, you know what? Greg is 100% wrong. Or you know what? Greg's on to something here. So that, that's what I think people should do. Um, and everyone's got a different kind of a situation here, obviously, too. It, you know, it, it, it depends on the individual person and their mindset. I don't want to convince anyone of anything. I want them to take in the current situation, listen to what I'm trying to teach, if you say, or however you want to put this or to talk about, and then again, make up their own minds. It's that, it's that, it's that simple. Oh, absolutely. That's uh, the whole mantra of this channel as well. Like, this is not investment advice. We're trying to educate. And if you, you know, like like what you hear is like, please subscribe, of course, as well. But uh, it, we're educating. That, that, that's the idea. And we want, we're want we thought-provoking yeah, conversations. Yes, the crew. Right? So, exactly. Knowledge is power. Absolutely is. And there's some fantastic YouTube channels out there, yours as well, that provide daily commentary on, on what is going on in the markets, right? So um, just, just one last thing, uh, Gregor, I just want to get a bit more granular on the commodities, gold and silver in particular. You mentioned silver a couple of times, but what is really driving that? And why do you believe, for example, that the, the Dow gold ratio or the gold silver ratio should be breaking down, breaking down in silver's favor in that regard, for example? I just look at the historical norms, really. And I think that maybe history doesn't exactly repeat itself, but it certainly does rhyme. And, and realizing the current distortions that exist. Let me, let, me, let me go as far as to say this here. I do not believe today, because of the distortions that exist in the, in the debt market here, which is the driver of all this, um, currency being a part of the debt market as well. If we look at this, in aggregate, and then we try to zero in on the price action of, of, of an asset. I don't believe there is one single asset today that has a real price discovery mechanism behind it. The twisting and rigging and hyperinflating, beyond, that should be a new word. I don't even know the word for the debt market here, um, has created distortions that are so monumental, in my opinion, okay, across the spectrum of asset classes, it's very, very difficult to get your head around it. Even for someone like myself, who is immersed in this constantly, and I study it all the time, and maybe that makes me a little crazy, but um, it also makes me, I think, smart. and it, it gives me an edge, and again, I feel a profound responsibility to the people who follow my work, um, the over a quarter of a million people that follow that follow my work. And I feel responsible to those people to give them act actionable information, not information to be entertained. Uh, I want people to listen to this, make up their own minds, and then take action against what's happening to them. Because if you don't, people don't see it, then I, I don't know what to say, <laughs> really. Mm -hmm. No, the writing is on the wall. I've said it before. So it's, uh, but you need to make sense of it and you need to have the capability and understanding of to act on it as well. So I think yeah. that's really, really important. Um, Greg, Greg, what very last question I, I mentioned it earlier, but uh, if you were to invest a million dollars, how would you allocate that capital right now? Well, if I, you know, I would. I would do what I always, what I've been telling people to do, get diversified. Don't take all your eggs and throw it in one basket. I'd be spreading this out all over the place. I would put a substantial amount of that cash to work in the in the stock market. I put a substantial amount to work into buying suppressed assets as well. I might branch out and buy uh, other things too, artwork, commodities, maybe a classic car or two, something along those lines. You know, I I, I just think it's very bad. Um, for people to, and there are a lot of people like this, and I hear from them every day. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm only in this one asset, and it, that carries a lot of risk with it. I understand, and, 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 and you know, certainly there are certain assets that are, are massively undervalued, um, but that doesn't mean you should only be in that. I want to, for example, um, be in in the market. I want to be long this market, owning stock 
that will pay me a dividend. I want cash flow. I like to have that monthly income from my my holdings. You understand? There's so many different ways to attack this here, but that's kind of what I would do. I would take that million and I would spread it out into a, a variety of different assets. Maybe overweight certain things. I wouldn't. Maybe I wouldn't allocate it evenly. Again, I would have to sit back and evaluate the current situation. But I think I would probably be overweight. At least understanding the current situation, and I think we're close to something big. Um, probably overweight uh, metals for sure. I would start allocating into uh, a wide uh, a basket of of commodities via an exchange traded fund or uh, something along those lines as well. I mean, there's so many things that people can do right now to to set themselves up and at least put themselves on the right in the right spots. Yeah. How happy are we with the 4.4% uh, interest on, on a 10 year bond? Would, is that even part of the portfolio consideration at all? I'm not happy about it. Uh, right, uh, oh, I'm just absolutely thrilled. I'll tell you something. I'll, I think there's opportunity here. I think there's opportunity for, I'm not a bond investor. I am not a bond investor. I'm going to say that right now. I don't, I don't like it. I just, I think there's a lot better opportunities. I mean, think of what you just said, a 4.4%. What are you going to do with that in this current environment? It's, it's I mean, close to keeping up the real rate of inflation here. But, yeah. but I think there's opportunity for people here, bond investors right now to, uh, to do well, buying the debt now, buy debt now. But again, that's not my thing. It's not my thing. But I, and I've been telling people this for maybe the last month. I think there's opportunity there. No, no absolutely. Fantastic. Awesome. Gregory Menorino, phenomenal conversation as always. Really appreciate you jumping on the call here with me and, uh, you know, running us through your thought process and uh, your ideas as well. Where, where can we find more of your work? You mentioned the YouTube channel, of course, but uh, where else? I'm pretty, just Google me. You can find me anywhere, but go to my <laughs> website, traderstrades.net. Um, I'm a pretty, uh, pretty easy guy to find. <laughs> Fantastic. Awesome. Really, uh, we'll definitely link to it down below as well. And uh, of course, really appreciate of your time uh, there as well. So we'll, we'll have you back on very soon, hopefully a bit closer to the elections. So we can really see this whole scenario play out uh, maybe in June when the first rate cut is announced. Eh? <laughs> yeah, let's so do that. We'll, we'll see, it's gonna be we'll see how that goes. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm me. just curious what that what that kicks loose. So thank you so much. And uh, everybody else, thank you so much for tuning in to Soar Financially. I hope you found this conversation here with Gregor Minery inf informational, educational as well. Did you like the questions we asked? Please put your comments down below. We do want to hear from you. And uh, we're producing this for you to educate and inform you about what is happening in the markets to maybe protect your wealth and uh, maybe expand your wealth as well. So Again, not investment advice. Keep that all in mind. But uh, do your own research, as Gregory said, and uh, it makes a lot of sense. A lot of great YouTube channels out there. A lot of good information out there in this day and age. Make sure to use it. And uh, we'll be back here with lots, lots more on SOAR Financially. Thank you so much.